most important thing about the chromatic scale is getting the fingerings right. Uh, if you don't get the fingerings right, you can't play smoothly and it doesn't, doesn't sound very good. And one fingering to watch out for is deciding which B flat you're going to play. Now, I'm a great fan of thumb B flat, which is on the back side of the flute here. And I love to play that fingering when I'm in a flat key like B flat major. But it's really dangerous to use that when you're playing a chromatic scale because you have to do an awkward slide of your thumb. So if you're addicted to the thumb B flat, um, try some other fingering. There are two possibilities for you. One is what I call the one and one B flat, like this. You probably learned this right at the beginning of your flute studies. But this way you can switch from B flat to B natural very easily with just that finger. And if you watch me closely as I play the chromatic scale, um, I use what I call the lever, which is right over here. It does exactly the same thing. You use it with your first finger in the right hand. So that's going to be our B-flat fingering. Now, the other dangerous area is the high register. A lot of young flutists overblow fingerings from the low register, and they don't play the proper fingerings for the high register, which are a lot clearer. So when you play high D above the staff, it's this way, thumb, two, three, and pinky in the right hand and not like a low D, like that. And then if we go to E flat, it's easy to remember, it's all the fingers. Not overblowing a low E flat. Then high E is like a low E with the third finger missing. High F is like a low F with the second finger missing. F sharp is like a low F sharp with the second finger missing. And high G is like low G with the thumb off. High A flat is like the low A flat, but you have to take the first finger and thumb off. And high A is actually based on F. If you finger a low F, you take your first and third fingers off. And there's really no rhyme or reason to the high B flat. So I'll, I'll show you how that is fingered. It's just thumb, nothing else in the left hand, and then in the right hand it's one and first trill key. And the pinky is kind of optional on this. That's high B flat. And high B, again, no rhyme or reason really. So you just have to memorize the fingering. It's thumb, and it, you have to have the natural thumb position, not the thumb B flat. So it's thumb, one, three, and then you take your third finger and put it on the trill key. Again, the pinky is optional here. And then we come to high C, and it's no thumb, one, two, three, four, one. And to clarify this fingering, this little knob that sticks up on the flute is called the gizmo. And uh, if you have that, go ahead and use that. If you don't have the B foot, just don't use the pinky at all, okay? So uh, here's the high C with the gizmo. Good, now we have all our fingering straightened out. Uh, the next thing, I wanna teach you a little trick because the chromatic scale is all half steps and it's really easy to get lost because there's no differentiation between the notes. And this is a way to keep on track with your chromatic scale is to relate it to a special kind of chord. And this chord is called the augmented triad. And it's C, E, G sharp, all the way up and down the flute. And the special thing about this chord is it ba is based on all major thirds. There's a major third from C to E, and a major third from E to G sharp, and also G sharp to C. So let's play that chord up and down the flute. Um, do it with me.
reason I'm teaching you this is that those notes are going to be on the beat, and you can aim for those notes. So um, the next thing we should do with this is lengthen the notes on the beat um, so that we can concentrate on those. So I'm going to go C and then go into my E and my G sharp and so on, all the way up and down the flute. So let's try that. Breathe after the first sixteenth note. So here we go. This is the whole chromatic scale. <laughs> 